right? The reciprocal function is when we have x in the denominator. So the parent function is going to be y equals 1 over x. And we need to know what does this thing look like. So um, how do we graph when we don't know how to graph? You pick a bunch of x's and try and find their y's. So we're going to pick some nice easy x's. Uh, looking at the coordinate system that I have here, we should probably pick 0, 1, and negative 1 to start off with. Plugging in 0, well, y would be 1 over 0, and you can't do that. So this one's going to not exist. D and E does not exist. 1, well, y is going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. So at 1, the y coordinate is 1. At negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So at negative 1, y is negative 1. Well, that's not very helpful. So we're going to need some more points. And so what I'm going to do is pick uh, the 1 half. And 1 over 1 half, well, that's a reciprocal of 1 half. Dividing by half is the same as multiplying by 2, so 1 times 2 is 2. So at 1 half, we're going to be up here at 2. And also at 2, 1 over 2, we get 1 half. So on here at 2, we'll be at 1 half. We can start to see how this branch looks very similar to our uh, exponential and log functions where it's uh, very curving. We're going to approach both axes, but we're never going to touch them. Um, we, in order to have a fraction equal to 0, uh, the numerator would have to equal 0. And looking at this fraction, that numerator is never, ever going to equal 0. That's why we have this horizontal asymptote at y equals, or at y equals 0. On the other side, um, the same values are going to work if I change negative the x value to negative 1 half, then my y value is going to be negative 2. So at negative 1 half, it'll be negative 2. And if I change the x value to negative 2, then my fraction will be negative 1 half. So we graph that at negative 2, negative 1 half. And we see we have this, this similarity um, happening, where this branch will also curve in the same way. We'll notice that, um, like I was saying, the two asymptotes, we have this vertical asymptote right here. Uh, that's at the line x equals 0. That's our vertical asymptote. And that is an asymptote because, like we said, the denominator of our fraction could never equal 0. Um, and that's why our graph is never going to cross that spot. We also have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis, and that is at y equals 0. And just like I said before, we have this horizontal asymptote because the numerator of our fraction is never going to equal zero. And each branch is going to get closer and closer to those asymptotes, uh, but never really touch them. Now, thinking about the parent graph, we want to see what translations are going to happen when we start adding uh, numbers throughout the equation. First of all, the vertical asymptote, that's this one at x equals zero. The reason that we had this vertical asymptote here was because the denominator could never equal 0. Now when we look at the translation function that we have here, our denominator isn't x. Now it's going to be x plus h. And this thing can never equal 0. So that means that x can never equal negative h. So our vertical asymptote is going to be the vertical line x equals the opposite of h. As far as our graph is concerned, that means that our graph is going to get shifted left or right h units. So now our asymptote is going to be over here at negative h. Similarly, we have to worry about the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote was the horizontal line y equals 0. And that happened because the numerator of our fraction could never equal 0. And again, when I change that number from 1 to any other number, it's still not going to equal 0. We won't let a be 0. That means that this fraction will still never be 0. So a over x plus h would never equal 0. That means that a over x plus h, and if I add k to that, that's never going to equal 0 plus k, or just k. So altogether, that turns our horizontal asymptote y into k. That's because y is equal to that a over x plus h plus k, this part. Basically, this is going to sh give us a vertical shift on our horizontal asymptote. It's going to move up or down k units. So 
if that's at k, here's our asymptote now. The last thing that we have to worry about is a reflection. And just like before, that's going to happen if a is negative. So if a is negative, then the graph is reflected over the x-axis. So if a were negative in this case, instead of having branches being in the upper right and the lower left quadrants, they'll be in the lower right quadrants, still approaching each asymptote, and then in the upper left quadrant, still approaching each asymptote. So let's go through the whole process of sketching the graphs of a few of these translations. Uh, if I want to graph y equals 1 over x plus 1 minus 2, the first thing that we want to identify are the two asymptotes. First of all, we're going to try and find the vertical asymptote. That's going to happen where the denominator is equal to 0. So subtract 1 from each side, and the vertical asymptote is going to happen at x equals negative 1. So find negative 1 and draw a dotted vertical line. That's our vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is just going to be where this constant is added at the end. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 2. So find negative 2 on your coordinate system and draw a dotted horizontal line. Finally, we just need to check for any reflection and since the numerator is a positive number, it's not going to be reflected. So we can see that our graph is going to uh, approach the asymptotes. In the upper right-hand quadrant and the lower left-hand quadrant. And there's a pretty good sketch. If we wanted something more accurate, all we'd have to do is set up an XY table and actually pick some points to find, like maybe the x, the y-intercept by plugging 0 in for x. That would be 1 over 0 plus 1 minus 2. That means our y-intercept is at negative 1, so we could go back and adjust our graph to fit that point a little more closely. And we could do that over and over again. The more points that we plot, the more accurate our graph is going to be. But anyway, let's try another one. For y equals 1 over x plus 5, first find the vertical asymptote, and that's going to happen when the denominator is equal to 0. So at x equals negative 5, go over to your graph, find negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and draw a vertical asymptote. Next, find the horizontal asymptote, and that's going to be the constant that's added after the fraction. And since there is no constant that's out here, that means our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. So our horizontal asymptote is just the x-axis. Finally, check for reflection. The numerator here is, again, a positive number. So our graph is going to stay in the positive positions. That's the upper right-hand quadrant and the lower left-hand quadrant. Getting closer to each asymptote, the further away that you get. All right, let's do one more. y equals negative 2 over x minus 3 plus 4. First, the vertical asymptote. That's where x minus 3, the denominator, is equal to 0. So it's at x equals 3. 1, 2, 3. Draw a vertical dotted line for your asymptote. Next, find the horizontal asymptote. And that's going to be the constant that's added outside of the fraction. In this case, y equals 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Draw a horizontal dotted line. Finally, check for reflection. In this case, our numerator is negative 2. That means that it will be reflected over the x-axis. So instead of being in the upper right-hand corner, it's going to get reflected vertically and be in the bottom right-hand corner. On the left-hand side, instead of being in the bottom, that one's going to be on top. And there's a pretty good sketch of the reciprocal function.